Hey, I'm Mark Morgenstern. Welcome to my video series on the human side of buying and selling businesses. And it's all based on one of my maxims. People, not spreadsheets, are the epicenter of every deal. There have been lots of influences on my life. The 400 deals I've done is certainly part of them. Selling encyclopedias door to door was part of it. Following the Grateful Dead for five decades was part of it. It's also worth mentioning that I taught a course at UC Berkeley that I created called Street Smart Startups. It was all based on my book, The Soul of the Deal. Today we're gonna to talk about what I think is the single most important lesson I can share. It's a mantra. The seller's mantra is certainty and confidentiality. Say it with me. The seller's mantra is certainty and confidentiality. Because when you're the seller and you've sold a business you've built and created, the day it closes, you want to know that you have all the money you're ever gonna get, no one can get it, and you can do whatever you want, including going fishing. That's certainty. Smart sellers want process, structural, and outcome certainty. The mantra is a drone, it's a musical drone. It's a sound or a word that gets repeated endlessly. Here's what I'd like you to do. When you start the deal, the first thing you say to any buyer is, I want certainty and confidentiality. <laughs> and then about every two hours you say, did I mention that I care about certainty and confidentiality? And you set the stage. Most people selling their own business are doing it for the first time. They're rookies. And we all know what happens to rookies. They make mistakes. You'll have to live with that and surround yourself with people who are more experienced. Your real fear is that the buyer will also be a rookie. All of those things impact the certainty of whether a deal will or will not close. And so you ask the buyer all of those questions. Do you have the cash? Do you have the authority? Do you know what you're doing? And don't be uncomfortable, just ask them. Every seller's maximum leverage point is when they sign a letter of intent. That's a very short document that outlines the essential terms of a deal. And they range from two pages to eight pages. If you're a seller, you want the eight page, not the two page. Because the two page says almost nothing. You want an eight page letter of intent. And it's incredibly detailed. Who's gonna pay what? When do I get it? Are you keeping my employees? When can you talk to my customers? It's every aspect of certainty. When will you close? What documents will you provide me? What due diligence do you require? What documents do you need to see? Whose approval do you need? All of those things are things you want to know as the seller because all of those things impact whether or not someone can buy your business. Have you worked with your deal team before? Is this the first time your lawyers worked with you? Is this the first time your lawyer has done a deal? Negative answers to any of those are really terrifying because I repeat, Rookies make mistakes. It's not their fault. It's not intelligence, it's experience. Here's what happens when the letter of intent gets signed, whether it's two pages or eight pages. Consciously or unconsciously, when you're the seller, you relax. You sort of think to yourself, okay, I've got this deal, it's great. Here's all the money I'm gonna get. I can go to the Bahamas. You act as if the deal has already closed and it really hasn't even started because now there are gonna be weeks and weeks of People going through your files, people doing due diligence, going through records, getting a 60-page agreement. And in all of those events, there are economic variables. And since you've already decided you sold the business, you don't really have the strength you had at the beginning. You reduce the value of what you're getting almost every single day because you lose the will to say no. It's hard. It's very human. But you want to give yourself the maximum chance to not fall into that trap. So the eight-page letter of intent spells out so many details that you don't have to worry if the buyer's lawyer is going to run amok in the definitive deal documents. If they take your two-page letter of intent and turn it into 60 pages, they have a lot of territory to explore, and they will probably explore it. That doesn't help you. If they sign an eight-page letter of intent, the lawyers have very little room. They have to follow all of those maybe 20 variables of the deal. Your certainty increases, your uncertainty decreases. The biggest and most obvious piece of uncertainty is the purchase price. If the seller gets it in cash at closing, there's no uncertainty. They got the cash at closing. Common structures, though, are you get cash and you get a note. 
You get cash and an earnout. You get cash and there's money in escrow. But the point is you don't get all your cash. There's a bunch of it that you have to wait for. And you want to know that between now and then, the buyer isn't going to try to renegotiate it and say, yeah, we've got a million dollars in escrow. I think I have about a half million dollar claim. So give me half of it, you take half of it, we're done. Or we can go to court and you can tell them you're entitled to the million dollars. That's not a place you want to find yourself. The first protection is getting it all up front. That doesn't always work. The second protection is understanding every single reason that you won't get all of your money. The bottom line is most buyers would like to buy the assets of the company and assume specific liabilities. Most sellers would like to sell stock. The buyer has less liability and less exposure if they buy assets. The seller has less exposure if they sell stock. That's going to be a dance that's played out every time. As the seller, you want to sell the stock. After structural uncertainty or certainty, there's outcome certainty. You can think of this pretty easily as the five W. I want to know who's paying me? What will they pay me? When will they pay it to me? Why will they pay it to me? And what could possibly prevent that from happening? You want to know every variable that could derail your deal. It's really important for the seller to know the seller's mantra. Surprisingly, it's pretty important for the buyer to know the seller's mantra. If the buyer understands what's motivating the seller and what legitimate fears and concerns they have, they're likely to address them. If they don't understand what it looks like through the eyes of a seller, they're not going to guess it. And of course, as the seller, you want to know the seller's mantra because it's your mantra. It's what you need to maximize the probability that you have a great deal and you're getting what you've worked all your life to save for and that you're getting what you've bargained for, you're getting what you expect. You have certainty, structural outcome process. That's what you want. Whether you're on the buy side or the sell side, you always want to understand what's motivating your counterparty what boundaries do they have and what flexibility do they have? What's going to motivate them? What's going to demotivate them? And that means you need to understand the emotional matrix of everyone you're dealing with and take that into account. Propinquity counts. It means that if it's important, you do it in person. People react differently when you're with them than over a telephone, a Zoom call, or any other thing you can do. And the last one, I think you're tired of hearing me say it, but I'm gonna say it again anyway. The seller's mantra is certainty and confidentiality. The seller's mantra is certainty and confidentiality. Hope you get to employ it. If you've listened to all of this, and I'd like to say thank you for that, and you want to learn more, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of The Soul of the Deal. Find a link in the description of this video. 